Yes. Um, anybody remembers the chant? Should I share the screen? I can do it. Yeah, please. Om Tahana Bhavatu Tahana Punaktu Tahavi Karava Tejasvina Vadi Tamastu Mavid Vishavahai Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Chant. Nine verses. How many? Nine. Nine. Kartu Jagnaya Rapyate Falam. Karma Kimparam Karma Tajaram Viti Mahodadhau Patana Karanam Palamashashvatam Gati Nirodhakam Ishwarar Pitam Nichaya Kritam Chit Shodhakam Mukti Sadhakam Kaya Vangmana Kaya Muttamam Poojanam Japash Chintanam Kramat Jagat Ishadi Yukta Sevanam Ashtamurti Brid Deva Poojanam Uttamastavad Uchamandata Chitta jam japa Dhyana muttamam Ajadharya Trot sasamam Tarala chintanam Viralataf praparam Ved bhavanat Sohamityaso Bhavana Bhida Bhavani Mata Bhava Shunya Sad Bhava Sustiti Bhavana Bala Bhakti Ruttamam Very good. Thank you. Welcome back everyone. Um, we are on the topic now where we are seeing the necessity, the value of activities, I am quoting unquoting, activities that pertain around some form of a divine thought or idea, including inclusive of a divine thought or an idea. So a specific nature of activity which is inclusive of a divine thought, a divine idea. Anything incorporating divinity consciously, deliberately. The importance of those activities, the value of those activities, the hierarchy of those activities, and uh, if not done those activities, then the outcome of that, if done those activities and the outcome of this, this is the basic broad outline and topic that we are covering in details and addressing things that keep coming up because this confusion is, as long as human beings are going to be there, this confusion will remain in human society because it pertains to a topic which cannot be verified by the senses. God is not a Indriya Vishaya. Therefore, it will always be a Vishaya for uh, speculation, for faith, 
for superstition, for hypocrisy. Around it, everything will function because there will always be division in the name of God because it is always going to remain a factor which cannot be verified commonly through senses. So this offshoot of that would be each individual will have to choose for themselves a mark, a path, a path which keeps the idea of God in their life or a path, a mark, which removes the idea of God from their life. And that's the basic division in human beings. One set of human being will say, this is all belief, not needed. Another set of human being will say, this is to be incorporated in life. If one chooses not to incorporate, Shastra tells us the gati of such a person. Gati means just uh, raste uska jeevan niklega. And when we say jeevan, we mean jeev me jo experiences hain. Jeevan ke jo experiences hote hain. The experiences that a person has as an outline, as a broad perspective. What is going to be the experiences of that person in the long run? Immediately, even if they appear to be um, fulfilled and satisfied, but slowly, slowly, samsar is the gati. If one does not include spiritually oriented activities deliberately in one's life, if one has chosen that of including it, Ishvara in any form, then what are our choices? How do we include it? That topic has been started and they are at the level of actions, three sets, Kaika, Vachika, Manasa, Karma. Now we saw all Puja, Japa and Chintanam, Upasana at the three levels. Took a few questions around Japa that are common uh, misunderstandings around which or incomplete knowledge around. We've taken all those questions that are commonly vague in society. We've tried to address them. There is one question that was left at that time. And can Japa be done in writing? Can you write the Japa? So as we said, there are three activities, physical, oral, and mental. So Japa comes more in a Vachika Karma. But can this be written? Uh, so if you have chosen, say, Om Namah Shivai, so you write pages and pages of Om Namah Shivai. That's it. You know, so it's like a written form of a mantra. Yes, of course, it can be written. And in fact, it is a very, very useful exercise. Earlier, start it better. So in children, when they don't have so much of an intellectual development, and their minds are distracted um, by nature, children should be given this exercise of writing the Japa. So it's like a, you know, something they look forward to and you can engage children in it. And children should be given this task, even if they do it for a few months in their whole life. And I'm making a very big statement. Even if it is done for a few months in their entire life, the benefits of this when they don't even know what they are doing, they don't understand what they are writing, they have no idea, even then the benefit is added for the rest of the life, for the rest of their life. So Japa can be written and not just in children, at any age. If someone finds that you cannot focus just on Shabda, you cannot focus orally, you cannot focus in the mind, when you focusing is a little um, challenging, then one should start with writing the Japa, irrespective of the age. So it is absolutely accepted. Now the next question that came was, is that we are on the topic is, Ramana says, and actually Vedanta says, Vedas say that. Whenever the topic of Upasana comes, last time Vedika here had asked, uh, Vedika Makija had asked the question, whenever you have the topic of Upasana, it is always understood as a, a division there. God is separate from you. 
भगवान तुमसे अलग है तभी तो तुम उपासना कर सकते हो सो वेन देर इज अ डिविजन देर क्वेश्चन वुड अराइज इज दिस डिविजन टू बी टेकन एज फाइनैलिटी आई रिपीट माई सेल्फ शास्त्र हैज ब्रॉट एस अप टू द पॉइंट ऑफ उपासना इन उपासना देर इज अ सेंस ऑफ डिविजन गॉड इज सेपरेट फ्रॉम यू the one you worship is going to be separate from you whoever it is doesn't matter whichever name you give it but it is separate from you and if you remember that figure that i uh, showed in the slide that le- that small girl worshiping a shivalinga just to get a pictorial description to say that it is outside it is away from me this sense of division should be should it be taken as a finality in life is this the final action a human being can pursue is this the highest that you can aim for or achieve is this the maximum that can be done kya bhe the, the sense of division which is here called bhed bhed means division a sense of division rakhe upasna karna is this the final thing a human being can do means god is separate i am separate should i say that this is final achievement i can have if i establish myself he said ajya dharaya srotasa samam if in this bhed upasna i have a constant flow of thought this is the highest so far i have a stream of thought like a river but the but that god is outside me that god is a separate form that god form of formless doesn't matter but that god is separate from me that god is separate from me and when i say that god is separate from me am i to take that as a final final achievement that can be done which means if you see the child worshiping if i go on practicing this worship this form of worship and after a few weeks or months i find myself that my thought is effortlessly going how does a river's water flow effortless a flow of water is effortless the flow of ghee needs some effort has a beginning and an end and to sustain that flow you need to sustain effort like a river when the thought flows means effortlessly now that effort stage has been overcome with practice it is becoming easy and easy and it's becoming natural it is becoming available it is remain that thought remains with you even when your physical body is engaged in actions you are engaged in the world even then your mind effortlessly remains on the object of its worship but that object of worship even if it is effortless easy ho gaya hai ab us insaan ke liye aaj hamare liye kya hai if we are very honest to ourselves herculean task if i were to be very very honest i would think between the challenge of making my mind effortless on a chosen deity and climbing everest i think everest will be easier why because it is still a physical factor needs a lot of practice but this needs such a subtle effort and to keep bringing the mind back to its object of deity who you can't see you can't it's just just your belief it's just your devotion it's just your faith hai ki nahi hai that's it and there'll be many days when your own emotions your own feelings your own thoughts and ideas you know they are distracting occupying the mind so much that even if you've chosen a time especially as you keep growing up and you have responsibilities in life your mind is divided in responsibilities and you find that that ease of going to its object of thought of worship 
is not so easy. You have to keep bringing it back. But with practice, Shastra has told us it is possible. Now the question is, is this Bheda Upasana finally complete in itself? Is this the ultimate effort I can aspire for? What are my efforts choices? My efforts choices is generalizing it. I can uh, put an effort to gain wealth outer in uh, wealth, money, uh, comfort, pleasures. I can put in effort to be on the righteous path. I can put in effort for say moksha. I can put in this effort and when I am decided to put in effort for say moksha or dharma, my spiritual activities become very necessary because they are the only ones who are carrying me to that experience. This is a very important sentence. My spiritual engagements, my activities which involve Ishwara in any form, these are my horses. They are taking me to that destination. I ride on them. The jiva rides on them. They will take me to the destination as per the scripture. What is that destination? Inner freedom. What is that destination? Inner joy. What is that destination? Absolute freedom. No bondage. A free word itself is, I think, beyond a point difficult to explain. You are freed of the notion of limitation. The idea that I'm a being, the idea that I'm small, the idea that I am little, the idea that I am born, the idea that I have to have this and that and that and that, and the idea that I will die, the ideas of insecurities, the ideas of attachments, the I, all this that is there in me as me today, all of this I find freedom from. But what is that horse that takes me to that? Are these activities which are going to make, take me there? Now the question is, is this the final effort I can, because this ke baat to it has now all become unknown. Whether I get the fruit of it, whether I, I become free of it, it is all unknown. It is left in the hands of the Shastra says you will. I do not know, so I leave it at that. The effort is what I know. Is this the Upasana? I'm culminating the introduction and the question now. Is Bhed Upasana the final effort that I can put which will give me this inner completeness? Is that enough? Is that final? Isse zada matlab, is there nothing else in my capacity that I can do? Isse zada is nothing possible at all. And Shastra says, this is not final. This to itself is looking like a Herculean task. But Shastra says, Isse bhi upar ek baat hai. An effort that you can aspire for, higher than this. And what is that effort? Soham upasna. Abhed upasna. What have we done here? We have an alambanam. We have fixed a form of any deity, anyone, I'm saying it could be Christ, it can be Allah, it can be anybody, anybody, any. through Vedic vision, though, it is so fascinating that it's fascinating why Indian, in, 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 in our culture you have so many gods because if your antakarnam is developed to become so sukshma, purified to be sukshma and you are in dhyan, there can be images of nirgunam as sagunam. Every one of them will represent something because it's the nirgunam which is the whole creation anyway. So to have any form as your alambanam is absolutely acceptable. Starting point was, I'm repeating the class a little bit because there is a hierarchy I'm presenting today. 
the starting point to an individual is a choice a choice to include ishwara in your life or not a choice to include a spiritual goal in your life or not a choice to have a spiritual goal in your life or not and spiritual means inclusive of any divine factor that's the basic idea of spiritual a divinity incorporated which you cannot see but you can only extrapolate this is your first choice that first choice there are those who say we don't want it shastra calls them now you are prakrit prakrit means jaise zindagi set hui hai it will go on by your ragadvesh ahankar aap chalate rahoge apne jeevan ki gaadi and these people are primarily those who believe so completely in the sensory information which is only available in the waking state and they call it as a conclusive information information in the waking state as complete in itself these people who will focus majority majority of them will spend time aspiring for pleasures of life money etc predominantly just call them charvakas you can even call them scientists no problem matlab from anywhere to, but they do not want anything to do with this unknown factor called god ye nahi hai the choice is for those now who say let me introduce this to my life once you have introduced this to your life through your actions you have karam yoga and that karam yoga is in the form of ishwar arpanam ishwar arpanam is in the form of puja japa upasana upasana is in the form of bheda upasana and now is a bheda upasana upasana where you are not seeing the object of your worship outside of you this is a very important point i haven't made any slides because i'm going to now try and see if we can just focus on hearing it what is abhed upasana bhed upasana is very easy to is tangible samajh aa gayi outside hai aur main idhar hu i have to focus my thought on this then what is abhed upasana what abhed upasana means a bhed bhed nahi hai there is no division between the object of worship and me there is no division this statement who can appreciate firstly is it possible to accept this like vedika last time had a genuine doubt how is it possible but where is the worship then agar wo aur main ek hi ho gaye and in other religions that will be blasphemy but uh, veda says that's the highest upasana when you see no division between the object of your worship and yourself how is this possible first starting point how will you start to appreciate abhed upasana when does this become conceivable to a person that abhed upasana ke liye main purusharth karu let me put effort for abhed upasana when will that possibility arise in the mind of a person when you know that you are not some medial i mean when you are not uh, you the same thing when you are brahman again i think it would come back to that correct correct excellent yes when we have the right knowledge and maybe repetitive listening to the right knowledge absolutely so you see we have understood before i can even attempt abhed upasana i need to know abhed is the truth i need to have heard abhed is the final truth that means all the schools of thought like we said before in tattva bodha when we touched upon a little uh dvaita schools of thought vishishta dvaita schools of thought you know all the duality based schools of thought manyata hai ye 
they are not just hypothesis. Now the, everything is manyata. Na? The minute we have said Bhagwan, Bhagwan ke baat to everything is manyata. Na? Bhed, abhed. Everything falling in bhed is a step towards abhed. Everything falling in bhed, duality, upasana with duality, is a step following to abhed. And what is Abheda Upasana? In this book, Ramana has very beautifully said it in one word, Soham Upasana. Soham Upasana is not created by Ramana. He is only saying what is already there available as a practice. What is Soham? Saha Aham. That object of worship that in Bhedo Pasna I am focused on, that is me. That thought is completed. I start as a worshipper, meditator, upasak of an upasya form. God, upasak upasya bhed hai. Upasna mera karam hai. It's an act. Deliberate. And I am going to repeat this till we are, you know, a ridge ban gaya andar hamare. Because it's a deliberate action. Apne aap se nahi hoga. Like last time I said, hamara man apne aap, where will it go? It will go to sensory pleasures and comforts. Where, where we have to make it go will become yoga. So mind will automatically not go to these things. It will go to these things easily. The in-between is after effort. So, when there is an object of meditation and I start with me, the meditator, finally, when I am able to say that I am, I must have a lot of knowledge and conviction of that. Saha. What is this saha pada? Pada means word. You know, when you see in, in Sanskrit, uh, because Sanskrit was a spoken language up to a few years ago, decades ago also, in Vyavhar also it was, uh, it's like Hindi and there were communities which spoke in Sanskrit. If you had to say, uh, Devadattaha, Kaha, where, who, it's a Saha Devadattaha, that is, you'll point there far off. Devadatta is there. Saha word automatically says that. Maha. Implies the distance between you and Devadatta. Can you ever say Devadatta aham? Only Devadatta will say Devadatta aham. Wo khudi keh sakta hai ki, no. Where is Devadatta? Where is Devadatta? Wo haat uthayega. Aham Devadatta. Amongst a group of 10 people, the teacher wants to know who is Devadatta, whose name is Devadatta. Wo uthayega haat. Aham Devadatta. In his mind, is Devadatta and he different? In his mind, he is able to raise the hand and say, Aham Devadatta. Because there is no difference between him and Devadatta. But in my mind, when I am asking where is Devadatta, I am very clear Devadatta is not me. I am not Devadatta, Devadatta and me cannot be the same. But Devadatta knows that he is Devadatta and he can say I am Devadatta. This is a big difference in Bhed Upasana and Abhed Upasana. Abhed Upasana's starting point is knowledge. A lot of clarity, a lot of conviction on the saha pada. Pada means word. In so hum, saha aham, that saha word represents what? What does that mean? So that saha clarity, that saha is Ishwara in this form, Say Ganesha or um, behind Aditi, who's Krishna. You know, there's a Krishna form there now. 
Now behind here, it is Ganesha form. Now, Saha Aham. That Saha Aham to start off is an impossibility to conceive. Because the minute I say Saha Aham, my action will fall off. There is no worship left outside. Mark these sentences. There'll be the action will stop because where is Krishna outside for me to worship? Agar wo yahi hai, now starts soha mupasna. And what is soha mupasna? Recognizing the divinity in here, in this form. And to recognize divinity in this form means my first step is I have clarity that Saha is Ishwara. And when I have so much clarity and so much now bhav flowing, because of my bhed upasana, I have developed a flow of bhav. Bhavna ka ek, uh, what is a Hindi uh, flow? Dhara hai. Ek bhavna ki dhara hai. Ek dhara hai bhavna ki. Because of my practice outside, that Krishna that I saw outside, that Rama that I saw outside, that Ganesha that I, that Muhammad that I see outside, that Christ that I see outside, whereas other religions will stop here. What is Vedic religion saying? You don't have to stop there. At that level, Rama, Krishna, Muhammad, Christ, everyone is same. Buddha, any Bhagwan, Mahavir, uh, all Confucius, Whoever you want to include as Bhagavan, as Bhat Unche Insan hai, you know, we are all the same at that level. Up to Bhed Upasana, every religion is the same. There is no difference. They'll all give you something or the other. But who will have, I'm using the word audacity. Who has the audacity to say that Bhagavan is here? Because as a highest form of humility as far as I can understand. If I have to say Bhagwan as Poonam, if I see Bhagwan as full, how can I exclude myself from it? Uski glory mein kaise kam kar by excluding him from here? You get the spirit? If Bhagwan is all encompassing, is all pervasive, is all complete, is omnipotent, is omniscient, is the controller, say even from the standpoint of other religions. He is the one who is the creator. If you take it from another religion standpoint, he is the one who is the originator of creation. If he is the originator of creator, creation, if he is the creator, then who am I? I am his being. And if he is going to be always separate from me, I am always separate from him. That Ishwara is limited. Because though he controls me, he doesn't inhere me. Then what is the force that inheres me? Is that logical? Is that... If he is so complete and he doesn't inhere me, so ye jo yaha chala raha hai mere nadi ko ya mere breath ko ya mere kriya shakti ko ye kaha se hai hai? Who is the giver of this shakti? And if he is the giver of this shakti and he controls it from there, then I am a puppet. Because I seem to be getting controlled only by what he gives me. That means I am a puppet and I can only follow orders. And this is the stagnation point. Iske beyond is where the Vedic vision has grown. Where has it grown? Questioning that, is this complete? Is this going to be the final effort I will be able to put in? Can I reduce myself to a nobody? Can I reduce myself to being a puppet? Can I reduce myself to only being ordained by certain laws? physical laws. I don't even know who the creator is. And here Shastra Vedas gives us this conviction. Saha Aham. Worship on it. Start with worship. You have the Saha Pada clarity. 
aham pada clarity i am this individual i am these thoughts i am this body i am this um, emotions and etc thoughts you have this but saha is ishvara ishvara is brahman saha is uh, aham is jiva jiva is ishvara is brahman this aham here that i think that i am this limited form this is incorrect limited thinking not incorrect limited thinking stagnant thinking human being ki vichar yahan tak agar pahunchi to it's a it's stunted yet saha aham what is that upasana now specifically how do i get comfortable in that upasana how do i introduce it just as initially we took the help of stone we took the help of clay we took the help of minerals we took the help of all this to bring that idea into a concrete form physical form what i have behind is a beautiful blue krishna now that i see a form and automatically my mind can go to it as that lord there that bhagwan there and if i am a krishna uh, i have i can already say krishna i namaha automatically i see a form and i can say krishna i namaha jai shri krishna i can say jai shri krishna the minute i say jai shri krishna the chitta part of me is invoking krishna but here i saw it outside all the material of the world helped me divinize a form which will help my thought to run to it it becomes a horse on which i ride but the minute i have done this bhed upasana now when i start seeing how will i become comfortable just as now it has become comfortable for me to do hey do pass na i see krishna and i can say jai shri krishna for one second i can bring my mind for a millisecond i can bring my withdraw my mind from all its engagements and bring it to krishna form and say jai shri krishna and i can do it at will at any number of times a day i don't have to sit in the mandir i don't have to sit in a temple i don't have to hear the bell i don't have to hear the conch i don't have to do the whole bhagavatam for me to get comfortable with the idea that i can see a form of krishna and i can say jai shri krishna with bhav not just a mechanical greeting how will that become comfortable in soham upasana what is soham upasana to start that again shastra gives us these beautiful um helpers because physical action is so easy conceiving they say soham upasana also you can start with first physical attributions and that is called anga upasana nyasa on your physical body to certain rituals and mantras this is a technical part and not very easy but on say on your heart you know wherever the heart sthan is if you can see it, your heart and on your heart you are placing a devta on the eyes you are placing another devta on your breath you are placing a devta on your feet you are placing a devta on your hands you are placing a devta does this remind you of something that's what were the presiding deities presiding deities of all organs Every of deity, action yeah uh, all the organs of action has a deity okay uh, and all the organs of knowledge so you there is already a presiding deity and we saw it in that context that presiding deity whose function is parallelly seen here and in a larger context that's why it's called a devta because it connects this to that now how has soham upasana going to arise slowly slowly that object of meditation you place it here there are two types of nyasas karanyasa and anganyasa i'm not sure if i've spoken of this before no 
Karanyasa means on your kara is palm. You're placing deities on your palms. You can place mantras. So when you do Gita Parayanam as a chanting, then you are placing mantras on different fingers. So by placing it, it's almost giving them a adhishthan. But what is that sthan now? In the previous case, say over here, Krishna's sthan is outside of my body. I see, say, behind Aditi, you see Krishna, and that is outside of you. But when you give the sthan on your body itself to start with, Soham Upasana, starting point is, your sharir is going to be the sthan of invoking the deity. So Karanyasa means on your palm. Anganyasa means on your angas, physical body. On your feet, on your hands, on your heart, in different areas, there are different uh, ways in which it's... But the idea is, you are now making your body the sthan of invoking the deity, invoking God, invoking that object of your worship. Am I making some sense? That is going to be your entire practice then. Starting point of Soha Mupasana. We have not yet reached the culmination. This is making the upasak comfortable with the idea. Saha aham. But before he can get into the meditation in the absolute form, means in, in, in completeness, he has to first get comfortable that this body I am not. This is not in the body. This is with which today my Dehatmyam is, I am this form, this Jeeva Buddhi, is going to be just another few words. It will be mechanical like somebody does initially mechanical. Not wrong, but it will be mechanical initially if saha is not clear to us. So nyasa is that ritualistic part again, which now instead of outside, that puja is now focused over here. And Upanishad gives us some very beautiful upasanas which bring you closer to Soham, upasana. And one of the upasanas, now here it's on the physical body, he'll say in the um, Sthula Shariram, sorry, Sukshma Shariram, Hiranyagarbha upasana. The totality of Hiranyagarbha, totality of Sukshma Sharir, if you remember, is called Hiranyagarbha. And that is called um, I forget the name now, but uh, um, that's antar again anga upasana, uh, but sukshma shari, on sukshma shariram. So Upanishads usually include that this kind of upasana. So all the other forms of puja and everything that we have seen so far. As the smriti part, slowly introducing a person. It's like, you know, from nursery to KG, aage, aage, aate, aate. Then the person is doing it on sukshma shariram. This sukshma shariram here is the totality sukshma shariram. That hiranyagarbha is not there. This sukshma sharir is the sthan of invoking the hiranyagarbha. That is... Um, that Anga word keeps coming back. Completely forgot. It's a very popular, it's a very... Upanishads mostly will start, you know, give you the Gyan part first. Soham Gyanam is given. Mahavakya Gyanam is Soham. It's given and then if the student is not able to grasp this and doesn't have mukti, then the Upanishad says, go do upasana. Means you still need qualification. And then after Upanishad also, when the student, teacher says, nahi, abhi bhi nahi hua, student says, I have still not got it, then Gita will come and say, go do karma, karma yoga. 
then when the student says i can't do karma yoga then the shastra will say not do puja do japa do you see the hierarchy it starts from the highest shastra doesn't want to waste anybody's life and anybody's time what beautiful a vedic view is i mean i so the only joy i have in life probably is because when i think of the glory of the vedas i can't think of anything else as glorious and as enjoyable as the vision that the shastras laid forward to human beings and it's sad that we will fight over it and we will destroy our opportunities we will not make use of that opportunity and see the vision clear, clearly sah aham tattva masi is the highest knowledge tat nirgun brahman you are बट ये अब हम जैसे जड़ बुद्धि बैठे हुए शरीर में दिस बॉडी आई एम यू नो मोटे हो गए हम पतले हो गए हम नो आई एम ग्रोइंग ओल्ड माई हेयर इज ग्रोइंग ओल्ड माई नेल इज ब्रोकन माई दिस बुद्धि दैट आई एम कैरिंग इन मी यू नो अब ये देह मैं हूं मेरा जन्म हुआ है मैं मर जाऊंगा आई हैव डन सब करेक्ट है अपनी जगह पे देर इज नो रिडिकलिंग ऑफ इट इट्स करेक्ट इट्स एक्सेप्टेबल and that's why shastra becomes so compassionate ki is is jeev ko i have to raise to the point of accepting tatvamasi knowledge that's a task jo jeev apne aap ko sirf bhogi hi samajhta hai aur rogi samajhta hai itna sa hamara vajan upar niche ho jata hai aur hamara pura antakaran hil jata hai because I go, my God, you know. Or when uh, I remember our grey hair when it starts off. Oh my God, I have started. Arey, what are you expecting? You're not supposed to grow old. शरीर है तो वो तो हमको first lesson of life ये है. So you see, when we say how strong the देह बुद्धि is, अब इस देह बुद्धि की जड़ों को हिलाना है. You see my example often when I say when you have a garden in front of your house, if you have a pot, it's easy. But if you have a garden and the weed has grown and a weed which will have strong roots, if you did not pick it up initially, at a later point, वो पूरी जड़ जब पकड़ लेता है अंदर, it starts to displace all other healthy plants also. Now the effort that will require to take uproot this, वो हमारी जड़ बुद्धि वो हमारी देह बुद्धि है सॉरी दैट आई एम दिस जीवा वट इज दैट देह बुद्धि इट इज सो स्ट्रॉन्ग प्रॉपर रूटेड हो गई है दैट अवेयरनेस ऑफ माई सेल्फ एज अ बींग कॉन्शियस बींग इज रूटेड इन दिस फॉर्म गार्डन क्या है ये शरीर हमारा गार्डन है इसमें जड़ पकड़ चुका है अभी हमारी समझ पूरी इसमें शरीर में जकड़ गई है पूरी So, थोड़ा सा कुछ शरीर को हो जाता है उफ हमारी जान निकल जाती है और निकलती है विच इज ओके फाइन इट्स एब्सोल्युटली इट्स अ पार्ट ऑफ लाइफ इट्स होनी ही है निकलेगी जान हमारी दैट्स ओके बट शास्त्र विजन इज वॉट इज नॉट रिडिकलिंग दिस शास्त्र विजन इज एक्सेप्टिंग दिस इज अवर हालत इट हैज टू गिव अस द नॉलेज ऑफ वॉट विल गिव अस फ्रीडम फ्रॉम दिस so those are the stages of practices that it gives us and vedanta is the final jisme it is free of all karma it is free of all upasana but it has the adhikari now the student is the adhikari who chitta can hold the knowledge of tat that ishwara you are and he can now have a effortless manan jaise dhara of stream goes to the object of worship thara of dhara of thought stream of thought goes to the object of brahman i am just before that that point that brahman i am means all that corrective thoughts are now the only occupation of the person that's the only preoccupation in the mind har jeevatva buddhi ko wo correction mein le aata hai of brahma buddhi उसके एक स्टेज पहले टू मेक दैट निधिध्यासन पॉसिबल सो हम उपासना बिकम्स अ एड यूजफुल एड ऑफ द हेराज क्लियर सो वेदांत ओनली गिव अस द नॉलेज ऑफ 
That's only knowledge prakarnam. Vedanta doesn't have all this in it. They are added in Vedanta because the student has a distance in his mind to cover. So, hum upasana means, now I'm just summarizing it again. To make it easy, it, it can be first put on the body. So, like we said in our meditation, we said, okay, in the nose, you have the entry point of the air. It's a very tangible feel. And that is now the vayu here. You can have it on your heartbeat. A very beautiful meditation I speak very often of comes from the Upanishads also. In the space of your heart, you know, the heart has a, actually has a space, is a, is a shape like this. You know? Is that thumb, the aorta going inside and there is this, uh, the valve there and it's actually shaped. I can't show it very clearly, but if you see it like that, it, it has actually got a shape. Yeah, it's got a shape like that. You know? the, that, that thing going here is the aorta inside, that huge thing. And then I've uh, forgotten all the technical terms for now. In that, that heart space, in this heart space inside, you know, there you see your heart. You visualize your heart. Obviously, you cannot, your eyes can't see it. That's why it becomes a meditation. Your eyes are not going to see your heart. You have to visualize your heart. And when you visualize your heart, you see the space in your heart. And in that space in your heart is that Devata Adhishthana standing there, sitting or standing there. And that's your meditation. Now, who needs meditation temples outside there? But is it going to be possible if I did not have a temple outside ever to bring this inside here? So temples are also welcome. They, they are needed in society because not everybody is matured to this understanding and this acceptance that Bhagwan actually is here, not there. There bhi hai. I can't say it's not there. But vaha se yaha pe bhi to hai. So if I'm comfortable here, then what is this body now? It's a temple. This body is a temple. So when just the seva that I do say outside to the deity, if I've had a bath in the morning, I have cleaned the temple because the deity resides here. Whatever I'm eating, I'm giving Brahmarpanam. I'm giving it to the deity here. I don't know how much am I making here. Sense, I'm presuming I am. It is to the deity here. If I'm doing any action, I can see that the energy is whatever I have to, to communicate, to do my action, to go about doing my life activities, to maintain relations. Sab kuch pure jeevan mein jo kuch bhi hum kar rahe hai. It comes from the Shakti here. This is non-separate from me. This is non-separate from me. I cannot separate myself from this Shakti. I cannot separate myself from this divine existence, presence. Abheda Upasana. That becomes Abheda. Another way in which it can be practiced. These are all tools in which that comes closer to you. When I am just saying, if I remove all the names, just that awareness that I know I am, I am conscious of. On that consciousness, I invoke that consciousness is here, that awareness is here. On that awareness, I invoke Ishwara. I invoke Bhagavan. I recognize this awareness is of the nature of intelligence, pure intelligence, is of the nature of pure knowledge. This awareness is of the nature of ever existence. That is Soham Upasana. Uh, that is Abhed Upasana. So Soham Upasana is helpful for Abhed Upasana. And Abhed Upasana is one of the final frontiers of effort before knowledge. Manan Nididhyasan. On I am Brahman. That Manan is an entirely separate effort. That upasana ka fal nahi hai ki aapko mukti mil jayegi. Toham upasana ka bhi phal kya hai? Upasana ka fal will always be 
स्टार्टिंग एंड एंडिंग हाव एवर लॉन्ग इट मे बी उपासना का फल विल बी गिविंग यू एकाग्रता दिस एकाग्र चित नाउ विल नाउ कॉन्टम्पलेट ऑन हाउ आई एम ब्रह्मन एंड दिस प्रक्रिया ऑल्सो दिस फैंटेस्टिक थर्टी वर्सेस ग्रेटेस्ट रेस दैट भगवान हेयर रमना बाय रमना इज कॉल्ड भगवान बाय हिज फॉलोअर्स दैट इज ऑल्सो क्लियर it's fantastic in the next 15 verses last he will give us that knowledge also what is that pure contemplation in which there is be no bhagwan there will be no deity there will be no god there will be no ishwara there will be no no need for any of this you will be free to, you if you can do that you don't need all this but if you can't do that start here So, if you are attempting your twelfth board exam and you have not even cleared your tenth board exam, or if for worse even you have not even cleared eighth, and worse even you have not even just about started the sixth class, don't attempt the twelfth board exam. Not possible. But if you are going, you will come to twelfth board exam. It's it's absolutely not possible not to come. Okay. so that is soham upasana bhed bhavanat soham itya sam where is it ah eighth verse bhed bhavanat sah aham iti asau bhavana abhita pavani mata this abhed bhavana wo yahi hai i am not separate from that in fact i am separate ka baat hi nahi hai as i said you know i can't reduce the glory of bhagwan by calling myself separate i may not understand is another thing but let me not reduce his glory he is inhering in everything so he inheres here also and if he inheres here now suddenly what have i become an object of divinity that is what and now by the way when i say namaha te namaste that is two words namaha te that visarga has become sa so it's become namaste that namaste means i accept you as an object of divinity to which i am bowing is it not an upasana is it not an upasana i don't ever knew that has it it has become upasana am i making sense yeah the minute you say namaste and if i say hello hi what are you and i we are friends there's a relation hi in hindi of course i've always said from the beginning hi is the worst word because you may be saying it in english but if you say it in hi means hi hi it has a terrible meaning so never say hi to anybody you know hello is still okay fine but why at till i don't understand i can not, not refute it hmm? what is namaste and when you say namaskarah that karah word that is added means i become the oblator meditator means i accept you as a divine object means i accept that divinity here and accept divinity there is the same hamara vyavhar hi hamare culture mein shuru hi yahan se hota tha namaste se anybody and everybody is first namaste i acknowledge to myself that you are a divine how can i injure you if i see you as a divine person how can i do wrong to you if i see you how can i cheat you how can i lie to you how can i do adharma to you if i see you as a divine person therefore the lowest rates of all sorts of crimes were used to be in those lowest rates you cannot free the human being from fallacies but low is strict why because it's ingrained it becomes an object of upasana and then the ninth verse also we are in the same spirit bhav shunya sat bhav sustiti he bhavana balad bhakti hi uttama maybe we'll do this again tomorrow a little bit so when we'll do this tomorrow at this point i think this is a complete topic in itself so ham upasana therefore becomes and one of the final aids for soham vichar i said soham can be japa soham can be vichar soham is bhavana 
So soham is a beautiful, if you do it just as pranayama, soham is a pranayama exercise, soham is a japa exercise, soham is a bhavana exercise, soham is a chinta exercise, chintanam exercise, reflection. How is he and me the same? And that mind is meditative the most who can reflect on how can that and me be the same? That becomes Vedantic knowledge. And that's not possible because it's one of the aphorisms then. It only becomes possible when you have Tattvamasi, Prakriya clear to you. Once that Prakriya is clear, then at some point, Aham Brahmasmi is Soham Brahma. With this, I think we'll end the class. And yes, you have a child named Soham. You have a great opportunity, including your child has a great opportunity. Let's end the class. Okay. Thank you very much, Deepthi Ji. Thank you, Panchi. Namaskar. Prinka, can you do the ending? Or should I put the slide? Sarvesham swastir bhavatu Sarvesham purnam bhavatu Sarvesham mangalam bhavatu Sarve bhavantu sukhinaha Sarve santu niram Sarve bhadrani pashyantu Ma kaschitukha bhag bhave Om Vasti prajabhya paripala yantam Nyayen margen mahi mahisha Go brahmane nityam Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu Kale varshatu parjanya Prithivi sasya shalini Desho yam kshu bharahitaha Brahmana santu nirbhaya Om Shanti 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 Thank you everyone. See you tomorrow.